And finally for us, a medical breakthrough that just changed the life of a toddler in the UK. Incredibly, little one-year-old Opal Sandy can hear for the first time thanks to the world's first gene therapy trial for deafness. A rare genetic condition meant Opal was born completely deaf. Well, now she can hear sounds as quiet as a whisper. Here she is, finally hearing her mom's voice. Wow. Well, a surgeon overseeing the trial at a hospital in Cambridge said results exceeded expectations, calling it a potential cure. Dr. Richard Brown, a consultant pediatrician who helped spearhead the trial, joins me now. Doctor, I'm continuing to talk because if I stop, I'm going to start crying after seeing that video because videos like that always brings a tear to my eye. Um, bravo. Congratulations on really uh, changing this family's life and Opal's life for the future. Um, Tell us when it became clear to you that the results exceeded your expectations, that Opal could hear even something as quiet as a whisper. Uh, so th this was a, a, a little process of, uh, for us. So w within the first six weeks, then we could just start to hear a little bit of improvement on the, the testing that we were doing. And, and indeed, at that time, her um, her parents said that they could perceive some response to sounds. Um, by 13 weeks, then um, her parents were convinced that she, she could hear them. Um, and our testing was beginning to show some useful hearing. Uh, and by 24 weeks, then, uh, you know, with, with the objective audiology testing, Tests, then we were seeing that she could hear um, as quite as 25 decibels, which is um, very good. But but more importantly, that exactly as you say, um, she can hear her mum's voice, and and she recently said, uh, "Daddy." So um, uh, if you think that 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 video is a heartbreaker, then then I, th I think for that family, then then for that that response was just incredible. Ah, incredible indeed. Can you tell us a little more about the condition Opal was born with? Yes, it, it's a genetic condition. So she has a, um, a spelling change in the, the gene we call uh, OTOF. And um, what that does is it codes for a protein called otoferlin. And that's really important in the functioning of the inner ear. Um, so the, the, the key really about Opal's condition and the reason why it was so suitable for gene therapy is that um, the anatomy of the inner ear is completely perfect. So um, it, the, the cochlea is a, a little organ about um, just like it looks like a little shell and it's about half a centimeter across. Um, and that, that is where we perceive all of our sound, where sound is sensed. Now, uh, the problem in her condition is that that organ can't talk to the nerve that takes the signal to the brain. Um, and all you need to make the whole system function perfectly is to just drop in the gene that produces that protein into those cochlear hair cells. And um, uh, so with the amazing technology that, that was developed actually in, in the United States by a biotech company called Regeneron, um, uh, we, um, we were able to uh, put that gene into her cochlear hair cells. So how many genetic-based oh. hearing irregularities are those like the one Opal has in the sense of, is technology like this scalable? Um, so ab absolutely. Um, so this is exciting because we can help Opal and we can we can hopefully help the, the other children in the study that we're recruiting to. Uh, and, and of course, the implication for that is that perhaps um, uh, within the UK, within the US and, and within other countries around the world, that, that we could potentially roll out this um, treatment to other patients with the OTOF um, mutation. But um, that mutation is rare. And mm. there are many genetic causes of, of hearing loss, and some of them are actually much more common than OTOF. So um, actually what, what we're hoping and what, and what we're working on at the moment is to be able to use the same type of gene therapy um, uh, um, for even more conditions uh, for congenital hearing loss. And uh, yeah. so that, that uh, we yeah. hope ultimately that more children will be able to benefit. That is so wonderful to hear. In the final few seconds we have, will OPAL require more therapy going forward? Uh, so we're hoping that it's one and done in that ear, yeah. um, uh, and that she she'll that she'll have hearing in that that ear for the rest of her life.
That, that, is, that is just um, astonishing. And just, I, I think you've pinpointed that uh, there are so many others who don't have the rare condition that she did that could benefit from gene therapy. Uh, is this something that needs to be addressed at such an early age like Opal's or, or can older hearing impaired um, patients also receive this treatment? So we're starting to recruit um, patients in, in our trial up to the age of 17, and we've recently undertaken gene therapy in another patient who is three at that, at that age. Um, uh, but in general, where we're dealing with uh, disorders of brain and development, then, then it's really important to get therapy in as soon as possible. And when we start thinking about how genomic medicine could help other children with rare genetic diseases, um, uh, then early genetic diagnosis is, is going to be really important. And, and building um, an evidence base for genomic medicine is, I think, mm. the future. Well, someone with an aunt and uncle who are hearing impaired, this is a deeply personal story for me and uh, very promising. Thank you so much uh, for bringing us this ray of light today, Dr. Richard Brown. We appreciate your time.